So in solving quadratics that are in factored form, uh, typically they'll be in something like ax plus b times cx plus d equals zero. And this is when they're already factored. This is, this is the type of equation that we're going to deal with in this video. Uh, often when you're starting out solving these, the a value and the c value are equal to one. So you might see something just like as simple as x minus six, the quantity times x plus seven equals zero. And then it's just going to be a straight application of the null factor law or the zero product property. So I know that x minus six is zero or x plus seven equals zero because if any one of those individual cases is true, then of course the product of these two things would also be zero. So that's how I can get my two answers quite quickly when it's given in this form, but notice that's when a equals one and when c equals one. There's another step added if a and c are not equal to one, but it doesn't really make it too much more difficult. If I think of the equation two x minus three times two x plus five, equals zero, I'm still going to use the null factor law. And I can say, well, either 2x minus 3 is equal to zero or 2x plus 5 is equal to zero. In this case, I add 3 to both sides. So I get 2x equals 3 and x equals, oops, x equals 3 halves. Or over here, I have 2x equals negative 5. So x would equal negative five halves. So it adds one final step here, but really doesn't make it that much more complicated. And that's the great thing about factored form is, is usually when it's in a form like this, it's, it's pretty easy to solve. You just set the individual factors equal to zero and, and solve whatever is inside the parentheses. So look at a slightly more complicated example. You might have something like x minus four times the quantity three minus x. And even though I say it's more complicated, it's not really, it just, it breaks the pattern. X minus four is gonna be equal to zero, so we know that X could be four, or three minus X equals zero. And this is what I'm claiming breaks the pattern, but really I'm just switching the order of, of X and the constant. Here I can just add X to both sides and get that three equals X, and, and once again, I'm done quite quickly. The nice thing about factored form is it lends itself to, to multiple factors. Here I have two things multiplied together and their product is zero. So one of those two things is equal to zero. But it wouldn't matter if I had three or four or five or as many as I wanted factors multiplied together. The same uh, property holds true. If any of those factors is zero, then my product's gonna be zero. So if I have a, a more complicated expression, say x times x minus five times the quantity two x minus six equals zero. I can say that, well, either x is equal to zero from the first one, or x minus five is equal to zero, or two x minus six equals zero. Obviously, if I had more factors, I'd just keep setting them all equal to zero. In this case, I only have three, but this will give me three answers. So in this question, x could either be zero, x could be five, or x could be three. And this is just using that null factor law, the zero product property, that if the product is equal to zero, then one of these three things must be equal to zero.